June 16, 1944. Ten days have passed since the Allies landed in Normandy, and a Hitler, very unhappy with the failure of his marshals, for not expelling the Allies back to the sea, is heading to the area to meet with both Rommel and Rundstedt. At this meeting, each of the three will present their vision of the facts, and their approaches to resolve the situation, while the debate gradually heats up until it reaches maximum tension, which will be interrupted by an Allied air attack on the zone. Next, in this program we will see all the details of this meeting, which was also the last time that Hitler left the original borders of Germany. It all started on the morning of June 6 when the Allies set foot on the beaches of Normandy. The German plan before the Allied landing was to make a rapid mobilization and carry out strong counterattacks in that area to return them back to the sea within a maximum period of 48 hours. This time limit was very important because it was calculated that with each passing hour, the Allies would unload more and more material, and this would lead to their positions being strongly consolidated. What ultimately happened was, that neither the Germans were able to push back the Allies in the weak counterattacks they managed to launch, nor were the Allies able to break through the region in the way they had hoped. This led to a stalemate on the front and the start of a new battle of attrition, in which the Germans ultimately had everything to lose. The German leader was very angry with this situation, as he knew that soon the Soviets would launch a strong attack in the east and he needed all his troops there, and not stuck in Normandy. Disgusted with this failure, he openly blamed Rommel in his inner circle for being a defeatist and a pessimist as soon as the situation got a little complicated. Rommel, on the other hand, insisted time and time again that he needed more freedom of action, and he did not like having to ask the German high command for permission to carry out any type of movement, which was almost always denied. Since all these debates and discussions were held either by phone or by telegram, Hitler decided to go to the area in person to meet with his two marshals and sort things out. On June 16, 1944, Hitler traveled with his entourage from his residence in the Alps to a complex of bunkers he had in Margival, about 90 kilometers northeast of Paris and near the French town of Soissons. Coincidentally, this was the complex that had been prepared to direct the invasion operations of Great Britain four years earlier. Rommel and Rundstedt arrived the next morning, and the meeting quickly began. After some rather cold greetings, Hitler began to speak very loudly, expressing his dissatisfaction with the evolution of the fighting. He criticized his commander's lack of motivation to carry out offensives or to defend positions to the last man. One of the issues in which he most influenced was that the city of Cherbourg had to be maintained at all costs, and that its loss was unacceptable. This city would be lost 13 days later, without his garrison showing much resistance, which made him furious again and deeply regret the general he had entrusted his garrison with a few months earlier. The first of the two marshals to speak was Rundstedt, but it was practically to make way for Rommel, asking him to present his report, since whenever he could, he avoided direct confrontation with the German leader. When Rommel took the floor, the first thing he focused on was the abysmal difference in forces with which he found himself, both on land, in the air and at sea. He commented that against such an enemy, it is practically impossible to fight. He also said that it was not true that his troops had been taken by surprise and unawares, and that the German actions during the first few hours had been superhuman. Finally, and before going into the plans he had to solve the situation, Rommel said that Cherbourg would be lost in a few days, and that it was useless to defend the series of fortresses that had been established along the coast, once the Allies they were already on the ground. The Marshal first proposed to bring as many men and material as possible from those 16 fortresses, established on the coasts of the Channel and Brittany to reinforce the defenses in the interior of Normandy. According to him, it was pointless to have many troops concentrated there, since the enemy would surround them without fighting and continue their advance. This was fulfilled in many cases, and some of these fortresses remained isolated until the end of the war. Rommel reported that the enemy was landing between two and three divisions a week, and based on the reinforcements he was receiving, he would eventually get the Allies to break the line somewhere in advance. What he wanted to do is to fall back first, about 15 kilometers to the south and establish the line in the east at the River Orne. Later he also wanted to prepare defenses on the Seine and Loire rivers and establish his defenses there. 
With this he wanted the Allies to penetrate the whole of northwestern France, making them leave the cover of his naval artillery, which was so effective in stopping any German counteroffensive near the coast in its tracks. This action would also allow him to regroup better and pick a suitable area for a big counterattack that could catch Allies off guard and cause him a heavy defeat. Saving all the distances, it is a plan similar to the one that Manstein had wanted to do a year before in the Dunitz Basin. Hitler flatly refused, and the idea of abandoning so much territory without a fight was simply unthinkable. Next, he went on to inform them of the effects that the V-1 rockets that had been launched over London four days ago were having. He insisted that this new weapon, launched en masse on the English capital, would soon lower their morale and that is why they had to stay as strong as possible near the beaches. Rommel said they could be better used against Allied beachheads or against English ports where troops were embarking. He also complained about the lack of Luftwaffe support in the area, and the overwhelming presence of Allied aircraft in the sector, making movement by him virtually impossible. The German leader agreed with him on the latter, but told him that the Luftwaffe would soon be equipped with hundreds of modern fighters, that would make it rule the sky again. At this point, in which Hitler asked them to trust these promises that he was giving them, Rommel told him that in the same way both he and the high command of the Wehrmacht had to have confidence in them and not brand their reports as exaggerated. He asked that several of these high officials of the high command visit the front to get a better idea of the situation, since it was up to them to give the final permits and orders. As the debate heated up and grew tense again around this issue of freedom of movement, a warning came that an Allied bombing fleet was approaching the area, and the meeting had to be called off immediately to go to a bomb shelter, that the same complex had. Once there, while they waited for the threat to go away, a new, more colloquial and informal conversation began between Rommel and Hitler. On this occasion Rommel spoke more openly about the bad situation in which Germany found itself on all fronts and the impossible task of resisting indefinitely. Rommel let it be seen that the war was lost and that it would be better to negotiate a peace. Hitler naturally did not like these words at all, because he was the last thing he wanted to hear. However, he went so far as to tell him that negotiation was impossible, firstly because he did not want to, and secondly, because even if he wanted to, the Allies had already set their sights on the destruction and subjugation of Germany, and would never accept a conditional surrender. Finally, the German leader concluded by saying that, now everything depended on the fanatical resistance on all fronts, and asked Rommel not to worry about political matters, concentrate solely on stopping the invasion, were the last words that addressed to Rommel before their farewell. Following the completion of this event, Rommel and Rundstedt agreed to meet Hitler again two days later, this time much closer to Normandy, in a town northwest of Paris. However, soon they received the news that a V-1 rocket had deviated from its flight and had fallen very close to the complex where they had just met with Hitler, so the German leader and his entourage had returned to his residence in the Alps and said meeting was suspended. It would not be until the end of the month when they were made to go to Berchtesgaden for a new meeting in person in which, again, they did not reach any understanding. A few days later, on July 2, Rundstedt was dismissed for defeatist comments, and it is said that Rommel was not dismissed due to his fame and the moral weight this would have had. And what do you think? Would Rommel's plan to fall back behind the lawyer and the Orn have succeeded? Could a strong counteroffensive have been carried out in this place farthest from aviation and naval artillery? I await your evaluations of this meeting in the comments. The books that we have used to carry out this program have been D-Day by Anthony Beaver and Overlord by Max Hastings. I leave you the link in the description, along with the program we did about Rommel's biggest mistake in Normandy. That's all, subscribe and give a like if you like this program and see you in the next one, see you soon.